that's one of those mitigating circumstances. So what counts as mitigation? There's a really famous case of a man, I forget his name, who murdered his wife, I believe, and then went up into like a clock tower and just started shooting people at random. Mm. I think it was Charles Whitman. Yeah, yeah, Whitman. So he he goes up this clock tower, starts shooting people at random, and then eventually is either shot or committed suicide. Mm -hmm. But he left a note prior to, you know, killing his wife and doing all of this, saying, there's something wrong with me. Mm -hmm. I have this uncontrollable urge to kill people, and I don't know why. It's beyond me to stop this impulse anymore. Please examine my body. Otherwise, they wouldn't have done it. And lo and behold, they examined the body and he had this tumor pressing down on his amygdala that was like forcing him to feel this impulse to kill that Mm -hmm. otherwise, if he had a perfectly healthy brain, he wouldn't have felt that. And I think that anybody who hears that story tends to imagine that this man isn't evil the way that we would Mm -hmm. assume he would be if he hadn't had that tumor. Mm -hmm. But then here's the here's the tricky part. What's the difference between a brain where there is a tumor pressing down on the amygdala that causes this person to feel the uncontrollable urge to kill people and a brain that is just hardwired to make you feel the uncontrollable urge to want to kill people. Right. The only difference is that the tumor itself is an obvious thing that we can pinpoint that says this is what's wrong in the brain. For the other person, we just don't know enough about the brain in order to identify what is going wrong there. But Amanda, you're forgetting Satan. (laughs) Some ideas (laughs) come from Satan. (laughs) but, But even that, even if... It Mm -hmm. was Satan Mm -hmm. whispering in your ear. Are you responsible for your actions or is Satan responsible for your actions? It's true. So how responsible are you for that? And all of these kinds of conversations make people really uncomfortable. I can't tell you the number of times I've had this conversation with people and they say, "Okay, Amanda, you have me convinced, but you can't go around telling people that because Hmm. if you do... Our whole society would crumble. <laughs> I, you know, I would love to believe that you have that power. <laughs> like this conversation in the past, like eight years, that's like very loudly, like justice for the innocent. And then quietly, if you listen for a while, you hear like justice for the guilty. <laughs> right, right. Very quietly. <laughs> 